So as we explore effective ways to utilize media spend, we can't ignore the significant impact of a strong SEO strategy on our marketing efforts, right? So in our next panel, um, our experts will guide us on how to create a long-lasting SEO strategy in a world of constant updates. Moderating this panel is Ivana Flynn, SEO director at Come On Group. So Ivana and your panelists, welcome up on stage. Give them a round of applause. Okay, I'll next. Thank you. Welcome. Is it working? Okay. Okay, if you are on stage too often, you get this as a punishment. <laughs> <laughs> so if I look uncomfortable, Rolling. that's it. That's it. You see, it's a bit on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. So, as, as we said, it's going to be about SEO. I think all of you are familiar with SEO. If not, it's the most wonderful panel of the marketing. It's the cheapest and it brings lots of valuable players because once people search for something, they want to convert. And I'm joined on a stage with the fantastic panelists and I'll kindly ask them to introduce themselves. Maria? Okay, starting from me, my name is Maria and I'm Head of Performance at Game Lounge. Previously, I've been in affiliation as well, Rake Tech, for uh, many years, so uh, pretty much representing affiliation in this panel. I'm Sean Bianco. I'm a co-founder at Game Changer. We're an SEO tech agency. We believe in solving complex SEO problems with technology, and that's me. Caroline Broman, working as a head of SEO at uh, Betson Group. <laughs> Thank you, guys. No pressure at all. <laughs> Been working with iGaming and uh, Betson Group for very excitingly nine years in different roles. Um, when it comes to websites, been working with them one way, uh, one way or another for 15 years or so. Started out of a pure curiosity and eager to learn and um, eager to connect. And that's why I'm still here after 15 years. Hi everyone, I'm Warren Samut. I'm head of SEO at SC Media and I've been <laughs> <laughs> competing with you now. No competition, teamwork. Yeah, for sure. Position one. Um, I've been doing SEO for 12 years um, and digital marketing as well, so that's me. Hi, I'm Charlotte Camilleri. I'm currently head of SEO and content at Video Slots. I've been in the gaming industry for 13 years and I've been doing SEO for 13 years. Well, we see who has got the followers here. <laughs> Wonderful. Wow, you really have got some loyal people here. Well done. Good. So you can see that we build a panel from every side. We have got someone from agency, someone from affiliation, someone from uh, bigger operator, someone from smaller operator, just to give you a full idea how to build a strategy for every need. If it would be all just big operators, it wouldn't cover everything. Well, this year was really, really crazy with updates. So what have we seen in the first half of 2023? And why do you think it has been so crazy so far? Shall I start? <laughs> well, for affiliates, I think um, Google been a bit evil. Um, <laughs> and a bit? Well, a bit evil. Um, with it's their like saying Hitler was a little bit naughty. <laughs> exactly, around Christmas time. But basically, then at the end of the day, Google is trying to do their job. So we have seen after the biggest update during the Christmas time, uh, and afterwards there have been quite a lot of movement in SERP. And what we've seen that a lot of affiliates, I think, have been uh, kind of gone on or went down on major keywords like casino, um, which actually is makes sense because in a singular way, it's that's where the operator should be. Uh, but I think over the last years, it's came a little bit shaky because there has been so much movement. So it definitely the year started on an interesting note. And uh, after that, we've seen another updates, a few updates which uh, did... Um, more movements, but I think right now it's pretty much settled down up until. Yeah. We're um, waiting for another one, right, guys? <laughs> and yeah, movement is always good, right? Because no one buys positions on Google. It's the result of incremental, consistent work to try and understand what's going to generate a result. And what nice thing about uh, what we've seen in the updates also is not only new updates coming out, but also rolling back of updates which were released in Christmas also. So we all saw that in Christmas there was the helpful content update, the big spam update. We saw that certain people saw fluctuations. We saw that there were certain links which were devalued on quite a large uh, variety of websites. What was nice also was that by February, maybe Google realized that they turned up the dial a little bit too hard over there and decided to turn it down also. So 
it's interesting when we're talking about updates because one of the things you can do to damage yourself more is act too fast also. Mm. Because sometimes they make mistakes, right? Google are not perfect. Um, another thing which has been noteworthy that I've realized is uh, the impact of traffic on search engine rankings. Um, this is not only with real players or real users, but also with um, fake users, let's be honest. Um, it's something which I've seen over the past couple of years, but I'm seeing it intensify as things go on. So that's a really good indication of where we're going also in the industry. Yeah, I think as well, there so technically have been three official updates this year, which is a little bit scary too. So probably like now it's happening while we're here, probably. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, the, the 14th uh, of July started to run. Yeah, yeah so, but, but there has been movements. So even, even during the past months, there have been movements which, which is happening. So for example, with Sweden with Casino Keyword, there's definitely some things going about there. Google is trying to figure things out. For me, most likely it is you know, relating to some sort of core here. We're talking about user, um, user journeys. We're talking about content, helpful content and page experience. Um, the other thing that I realized, which is not specifically with iGaming, but definitely when it comes to product reviews or reviews as they updated it as well, not just focusing on products, is that if one is emphasizing much more on actually showing hands on both visually and within the content, the actually experience of it. Um, so not just expertise, which technically anyone could fake, right? Someone could just create a fake profile that I'm an expert in this topic, but actually showing hands on the experience. I've actually seen some other projects that I have um, taking first positions uh, pretty, pretty good by just updating to show that, hey, I'm actually checking this book or actually you know, building this furniture again, of, of this industry, but it's still a good example that the experience is a real thing. So for, for um, affiliates specifically, um, I mean, showing that someone is actually playing the slot or even for an operator should be the way forward. Yeah, the updates this year have been quite crazy, but I think we've seen Google in a bit of a panic mode as well, like with OpenAI disrupting it, with algorithms such as TikTok and Instagram sort of taking more users' attention. And I think it's uh, sort of a shift that we're seeing going forward as well. Like long are the uh, like long form content that we used to create. It's less relevant now, and people have a much shorter attention span. So I think as SEOs, we need to start to cater for that going forward as well. Um, I think we've seen a rise of uh, auto generated content as well, and uh, now we can see that Google's putting a lot more emphasis on um, author authority. Mm. So it's uh, similar to what you were saying there, Caroline. Um, so I think you'll start to see a lot more author bios on blog posts and actual author pages which link back to all of those articles that have been written by that author, as well as linking to that author's social pages. So Google will be looking for those social signals to make sure that it is actually a real person and there is engagement there. I think that's something that um, we need to keep an eye on and actually start implementing. Yeah, completely. Very true. I would like to go back to the traffic you mentioned. I mean, this is what we say in every panel, and we, we shared a lot of panels together. We always say SEO doesn't stand alone, okay? So make sure that it works with all of your strategy, right? Because traffic is a ranking signal, and if you bring more traffic to your pages via SEO or other media, it will help you rank, right? Do you want to go a little bit deeper to that, uh, to that traffic? Because like, we're really experimenting with it right now, and we see results, and I know you, you, you're studying it a little bit I don't now. think Liam, my head of marketing, will be too happy of me going into too much detail. Liam, yeah. please leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, let's just say that if you're a product, it's natural and organic that you are going to promote that product. And uh, as far as I can tell at this point in time, uh, the easiest hack that you can put into Google as of today is pushing real or fake users towards a website because that is not currently grounds for penalization. So you can play around with it as much as you want. Will that change in the future? Potentially. But consider that even if an SEO team works extremely well with a media team, whenever you provide advertisements through programmatic uh, ad networks and all of these different media channels, even direct deals with particular websites, effectively you're creating links which generate traffic. And if you track them and you put them into the correct strategy as a 360 degrees, you might see performance which you didn't think you could have achieved without it. And I think it's not just the push on rankings as well. At least, I mean, we're very lucky in, in my company to work with 17 brands. And we see that if we have got the push from other channels, the growth is more stable. 
and the rankings are more stable. So I think um, always when you're building SEO strategy, don't think just SEO, think outside. Think what can you utilize to emphasize SEO, to, to bring more traffic, to bring more authority, because obviously authority could be a link on LinkedIn that doesn't give you follow link, could be a mention, but uh, yeah, so all of that. I think like one of the things I can add is what you need to choose. There are 101 way how to do SEO right, right? And the panel is talking about the sustainable way, so I think it's to find that kind of way that works for you and your company, whether you want to include PPC, whether you want to include other sources of traffic, just make sure that that's sustainable because if you just try to play with something for a month, next month you don't, and then in three months time, okay, let's try it again, that doesn't show really the authority that shows experimentation, you're unstable, you're not sure what you're doing, so I think the sustainable is actually the keyword here because it might not work one month, but you actually need to push it. You need to give it time in order to see SEO works. We all know that. But even with other methods, uh, the proof of concept can take uh, after a few algorithm, algorithms updates, we'll see what's happening. We need to wait until Google actually mm -hmm. sorts it themselves out and put the right results in the right places as well. I always say just one simple thing, if I can add on that. I always ask my team, and they probably heard um, too, too many uh, of my comments on this, but does it you know, what, whatever we do, does it provide value? Does it provide value for the user? And I mean, here also the user is the human and the, the crawler as well. But yeah, sort of sum, summing up what you said. Good, so moving on, you already started on a Charlotte, AI generated content. <laughs> now AI is getting more and more into our lives, not just in the work of SEO, but everyday lives. Is this changing how we optimize and how are we going to be going forward with creating Google content and Google value? Do you think we can actually utilize any AI tools to I our think, advantage? I think I can start. I mean, I hear a lot, especially after the release of ChatGPT, there has been a lot of chatter saying, ah, oh, the content writer's job is going to be uh, not needed anymore. And I think we need to treat this uh, as a tool, this is a tool, I mean, um, Ahrefs is a tool that helps us to understand the rankings. Doesn't mean we don't need SEOs, really. Uh, and uh, I've seen someone said, like, if we actually, a person really, or a CEO of the company really wanted to, could describe what they want out of the product, maybe the AI would be great. But I think as SEOs, as content, we add that um, such an important human factor that um, we still need to, I mean, Google, those updates were AI-driven, right? And we've seen how they went. Someone needed to go back and tweak it a little bit and say, listen, this wasn't a good result, so AI maybe didn't do a good job there. Um, I encourage everyone to use AI tools because I think they can make your um, job you can do your job faster, you can do it more efficiently, you can produce content, you can get ideas, you can be more creative, your content can be much more enhanced. Should you use it solely and replace content writers? I don't think so. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head and I can further, you know, reinforce that, that AI at this stage is a calculator. It is a tool to be used and it is a tool to automate things which don't make sense for a human to do. Is it the solution to every single problem as people think it is? No. And what you'll actually determine over time is that if you try to solve every problem with AI, the amount of effort you put into it versus the output that you get out might not be worth the investment in the first place. So at Game Changer, we've been literally using AI since the day that we started. What's really changed, which is really impressive, is the access to AI. So before you would need a developer or someone who really understands to take data and make sense of it in a way which can be automated and scaled. Now you can do it by simply talking to a robot and feeding it data and training it. Um, also, another thing to consider is if we're replacing content writers to a certain extent with AI, what is the quality of the content writers which are being replaced and the quality of the content being distributed? So I believe that AI is going to move us towards a stage where content is not fully written by humans, but is edited by humans. Because as you said, it speeds up the rate of improvement and the amount of research you can do, you can do in a very short amount of time. So in general, as a rule of thumb, you can reduce your workload by around 30% if you implement it correctly. But you also always need to think, is the use case justified with the amount of time that I need to spend and resources to get it working the right way? And is the output what I was expecting? Yeah, I think so as well. Um, you said that really well. Um, 
from, from an ideation point of view, briefing and certain tasks that um, we are currently spending quite a lot of time getting quality-wise as well um, in place, those type of tasks most likely we should be using AI for. So we should definitely be working with the AI, not against AI. Um, one of my colleagues was in our panel yesterday, um, Arimas, he did mention, of course, regulation bit, and that's an, a, that's an important topic as well. Um, another area that I'm definitely interested in when it comes to AI is the prediction. Um, there are so many tools as well that already are on the market and they are using AI so that we can more estimate when it comes to trending keywords, specifically around sports boat. It's a very fast uh, industry for us as well. So to be able to use AI for these type of prediction um, would be fantastic when it comes to budget conversations yearly or even quarterly. Um, but otherwise, when it comes to AI and more of the SERP, how, how Google is sort of incorporating that into the SERP, I think that's an exciting time. I mean, going back a little bit, what you said, the customer have sort of changed. It's becoming more of a curated way, which we can see on other platforms as well, like Pinterest, there is TikTok. Um, everything is becoming a little bit more, like we're becoming lazy. So everything is becoming a bit more SERP for us. The question is, of course, do we actually trust what is there? Even though on Google now, there are sort of, um, the SG is sort of showing, sit to uh, other sites, um, but is it enough for us to actually trust that? Um, but when it comes to us continuing to optimize for it, I think we should, and the user personas becoming, uh, everything around personalization and uniqueness is becoming much more important, so we should understand our audience, basically, which we should probably do today anyhow, mm. but it's becoming even more important. It's, I mean, AI, it's still at the, it, it's not even been a year, right, since it's been out and about in, in, in such a big way. And now we're seeing companies like Adobe doing it in like Photoshop and generating amazing images that look like proper photography. And I wouldn't say it's either AI or user generated content. They need to live together. AI is there for informational based searches and it does an amazing job at that. I don't think there's a point of creating content from scratch that's informational. But then we see platforms that are thriving on user-generated content, where people want to see what other people are saying. They're not really trusting companies that much, unless the company operates as a user. Like Ryanair comes to mind with their TikTok channel. They're like completely unhinged. They definitely don't go through approval processes to publish content, but people love that sort of stuff. Um, I think what we have to keep in mind is how is the AI getting the information to provide these answers and that's from human generated content and um, I mean right now we're seeing that some automated content is actually ranking but if that becomes more and more popular and all content becomes automated then we're just going to end up with copies of copies of copies. It's not there for us to take shortcuts as content creators. We should still be doing the best. Google rewards good quality content that comes from experts. So I think we do need to be changing the way that we optimize um, in order to be accessible to the, the chatbot crawlers and so on. So there's things that we need to be implementing, such as like schema markup is becoming really important now, the way that we, um, the way that we lay out our content to make sure that that's accessible. But I, I still believe in uh, human-generated content all the way. Maybe you could, use, you could use AI to create certain templates and then, as Sean said, go in and have a human being edit that. But I feel like there's going to be a lot of focus now on human-generated content and proving that that's coming from experts. Yeah, I think that is the problem that if we're going to just use AI, as you said, it's going to steal an idea from content that already is, exists exactly. and then it's Ouroboro because it's like nothing new is out there, and if there is a mistake in the content, if we're feeding a false information and there is no one to check it, exactly. then we run into problems, right? I think you actually told us a very interesting story, Warren. Do you want to share it? It was the, the one with the legal, legal uh, yes, issue. There, there, I there mean, was a an, lawyer an amazing who like, uh, uh, built a whole case using AI, and it <laughs> cited cases that never existed. So <laughs> completely generated them, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to go to... Um, a case where you're presenting a legal argument of stuff that doesn't exist. So yes, the, the human element obviously needs, still needs to be there at this point. Yeah. So we might not go to a courtroom, but we still need to present a data or a content that is valid and it's factually correct. Yes. Yeah. I mean, misinformation is a big risk of AI at this point, but we're still in the first year, right? So they're developing methods, I'm sure, to validate what 
is being generated by yeah. AI as well. Uh, and it's an interesting comment as well, like Charlotte, you made uh, about, so again, Google have gone out to talk about we should definitely write from a human aspect. It's all about helpfulness, it's experience, trust, and authority, and all these bits. But yet alone, this is such a hype thing. And of course, it's a hype thing that they had to follow as well, because the whole world was wanting this, basically. Um, so it's going to be an interesting um, time to see like how they sort of balance that as aspect. Are they going to cater for more smaller creators as well, a little bit on what you were touching on as well. Is this part of their sort of bigger picture? Because some, one way or another, they are sort of slightly a little bit contradicting what they are telling us to do in a way. Um, but it's going to be an exciting time because I think there is something in that, but it's just a matter of wh where are we heading with it. Yeah, and uh, let's not forget, at the end of the day, Google is an AI. What's changing over time is the way that Google presents information mm -hmm. as a result of what it's processing in the background. And we're all waiting for effectively search results having content presented, which is written by a robot. And we all don't know what the outcome is going to be. Mm -hmm. But we do know that when we're looking in the past at featured snippets, which is a piece of content taken from your website and placed at the top of the search results, that we did see a decrease in clicks over there. Now, there's a good and a bad with everything. And if you see that the answer to people's questions is easily served through an AI-generated piece of content, then AI would become more acceptable. Mm -hmm. AI becoming more acceptable then means that you can start creating patterns and different prompts and prompts and patterns of those prompts to generate more unique content even in the longer term um, scale of these things as they progress. And even if you do have a reduction of clicks, then you end up with an increase in output at a lower cost. Mm -hmm. So it's anyone's guess where it goes. Mm -hmm. um, we're all just <laughs> doing this right now. But yeah, it's, it's an interesting time to be an SEO. Let's put it that way. I think uh, just my last comment regarding the AI, we always need to understand that we're always going to have advantage over AI because we get information from so many different so sources as well. Like, for example, working in the SEO field, right? AI only can have access to what's already there, but identify trends, talking to people, going to conferences, looking at Twitch, reading the Discord channel. If a person can go and cross-check all this information and identify the trend that for certain markets, this is what people are talking about and put it out there, n no AI at this point can do that. And I think this is the winning strategy, what we can do in SEO right now. Okay, and this is such a popular and controversial topic that I would give you time to ask questions. I'll come with the microphone. So if anyone has a question, at least I take a break from the horrible chair. <laughs> yeah, question. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so I have a question. How you avoid cannibalization with your affiliates and your internal content? Because basically, quite often, operators and affiliate affiliates they target the same keywords. So how do you ensure that? Uh, well, basically, we're not. My, well, you know, my affiliates are upper than me, and they are also promoting the links of the competition. So we want to be in the top. So how we avoid cannibalization? Thank you. Anyone? I think um, when it comes to affiliates, it's so it, it's your brand, right, that I would be more worried about. But if, if anyone's outranking you for your brand, then you've got a serious problem for your brand name, you know. Um, and in terms of all, all the other keywords, I mean, that's just not affiliates. There's, that's just really high competition. And you just have to keep doing what you're doing and following best practices. And I mean, you're not going to make any agreements with them that like these are our keywords, you know. So it's just um, just general SEO optimization and following the Google guidelines. And, and does anyone else have any other advice for that? For me, for my end, is you need to identify what you are the expert at. So if you just try to, even in affiliation, right? If you just try to rank for all the keywords possible, all the converting best run sports, being like you know, you're just going a bit too much. Obviously, if you have a big site that can take that with a huge amount of authority, you can do that eventually. But you need to know where do you expert at and just develop that sort of topic in a way that no one can compete with you, that you are just developing that topic so much that Google knows that you are with that, within that topic, you are the expert. You are the first one to come up with the trends. You know everything surrounding that topic so much. OK, you can have like kind of information about other subjects, but this is what you're talking about. And I think Google loves that 
because Google right need to place you somewhere. So when you help Google to identify what you're actually targeting, what you're really focusing on, it will be much better for them to rank you higher than the competition rather than be scattered around all the keywords that are good. Any other questions? Okay, I go back to my torture device. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> affiliates shouldn't be seen as the, the enemy. They should be seen as your friend. Um, yeah, and at the end of the day, uh, it costs money, a lot of money, a lot of effort, a lot of expertise to get those rankings. And the question you need to ask yourself is, are you willing to compete? And maybe you're not the right uh, source of information to compete. And how much is it going to cost you versus how much are you paying on your CPA? Mm -hmm. There are, sorry to interrupt, there, there are certain keywords that an affiliate can rank for that an operator won't, such as like a, a lot of information or, you know, like how to play certain games and so on. Like operators don't focus on these things. So it's just an additional way to drive traffic to your site um, for terms that you usually wouldn't be able to rank for. And you want your affiliates to be ranking because that's the whole point of uh, setting up those affiliate deals and getting traffic from them. Yeah, you should uh, align. So uh, basically, sorry if I interrupted you, uh, but definitely find an aligned strategy on it. Um, look at the SERP more from a holistic viewpoint. Understand again what you're saying, like which which searches is more operate prone and which ones are more affiliate prone, and find um, the synergy between them. So again, not competing, but actually finding that alignment, and that's that's the best way forward. Yeah. Very good. Now we're a little bit short on time, so. What do you think we're going to see for the rest of this year and the beginning of next year, and how do we prepare for it? Obviously, keeping in mind the constant Google updates, the rise of AI, the popularity of TikTok for searches. How do we prepare for this? What do you expect as an expert? Is it going to be many more updates or not? Google's actually going to take a break. Um, I mean, I think they're preparing for mostly next year, right, with the search generative experience. So we're starting to see even some of the updates um, focusing more on that. Like even they're dropping YouTube stories um, to be able to um, push YouTube shorts. So they're trying to emulate that um, short form user generated content. And we might start to see a bit more of that towards the end of the year, beginning of next possibly. Um, but yes, AI will still be a, a big part of that. Um, there is a lot of, uh, as Charlotte said, like a lot of the content will tend to be the same for those types of information and searches. Um, but it's it's an interesting time. I think it's one of the biggest mm -hmm. algo changes or like search changes that we'll face, right? Should we consider TikTok as a search engine? I mean, I know there is a lot of um, the, the Generation Z is is moving there to search. Can I mean, we use we, it? Can we, we utilize it? I know it's not really for iGaming, but is it something we should consider for, for, for the future, maybe? For iGaming, for now, it's, it's, um, it's not allowed. And not yet. I mean, but, they're doing some know. tests, obviously, but it is a search platform. We're, if Google stopped tomorrow, we're not going to cry for it. We're going to go to Bing. We're going to go to the next best thing, right? As long as people are searching, we're fine. And TikTok is one of those channels which is taking a lot of searches in quite a few industries, like travel industry, food industry. People are searching on TikTok, like best places to go in Rome. Like people want to see that visual content that other people are shooting. And you see this in popularity and even physical stores where, where they suddenly become popular because of a TikTok video. So, you know, limiting ourselves just to Google because they have been the best in the last 10 years it's not really conducive to a longer term strategy. Mm -hmm. We need to be on the lookout for what else there is. True. So basically, we will not move to TikTok yet, but are there learnings from TikTok we can maybe we can learn we from can their take algorithm. Like, and start to optimize for? Yeah. Is there the, something you would recommend to keep in mind for? I next mean, their year? algorithm is um, very much based on virality. The attention span on videos, I mean, they, they recommend it is around seven seconds, but people drop off after two. So if you don't get their attention, you're, you've lost that user. So um, that virality aspect with TikTok videos, you know, forget the expensive productions, expensive content creation, just do short stuff that's viral and trending. That's the idea behind it, basically. Yeah, I just asked something there, like, but what's the actual user intent, though? With I don't actually know too much about TikTok myself, but in terms of conversion and the user intent, like, the way I see it is if you go into TikTok, it's more for an entertainment thing, but are people actually making, like, um, are, are they converting? Are they purchasing? It's brand. On? It's, it's oh, so it's mostly brand. about brand, okay. yes. I don't think so the, I'm not very familiar with it myself. There isn't so much of a user journey that is leading directly to a conversion in the same way a landing right. page would, but the brand building, the brands that are succeeding there, 
are the ones that are... Okay, you know. so like to build up that authority, yeah. your brand name is... Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, but branding goes hand in hand with SEO. I mean, Completely. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I guess all we're doing online is chasing attention. <laughs> and as marketers, you'd have one person who goes to different platforms for different things. So you might be uh, targeting someone on the lower end of the funnel from an SEO keyword, or just building up awareness on some other marketing channels such as TikTok. So then the question becomes, who are the audience on TikTok and what are their, what are their demographics and what are their uh, behaviors like? Yeah. And an attention span of two seconds is not an easy attention span to convert. No. <laughs> um, so you have to be really careful with why, when, what, what message you're pushing out in which platform it has to be customized. And some platforms just don't make sense to chase attention on, right? And then something also to bear in mind is that there are a lot of, I mean, we're talking, this is an iGaming conference, right? And uh, on TikTok and these different kinds of platforms, there are a lot of under, underage people that can see messages mm -hmm. which are not appropriate. Mm -hmm. So there's also a responsibility over there. Yeah. With great power comes great responsibility. We are all nerds up here, so we all know where, that's, where yeah. that is referenced from. Um, so yeah, there is a place for it, but the use case has to be defined. Yeah. I would say for the future as well, um, Again, personalization, I think that's so massive. And it goes into AI, it goes into Google's ETA as well. It goes into so many aspects that Google is uh, um, focusing on. And also, if you think about the um, creator economy uh, industry that's booming, I think it's predicted to be like 500 billion in 2027 or something like that. They're all succeeding because there is such a targeted per personalization there as well. So I think that is something we need to look into. We need to understand, yeah, where is our audience? What, what are they talking about? And what, you, what, what, what is aligning with our business in a sense? So I think that is something that definitely will be on. And also going back a bit, what is search? I mean, we've been so fascinating for the past 10, 12 years. And like, SEO means Google. Does it? Again, where is our audience, depending on the niche, the market, and so forth. So that is definitely questions on my, and, uh, my agenda and on my team's agenda at the moment. I think from my end is actually just making sure that your goals, your company goals, are aligned with the user experience. And whatever tools you can use, it's, you just need to make sure what you're trying to do. If you're trying to promote your brand, maybe you can go for brands and keywords on PPC, maybe at some point use the TikTok. If you just want your brand out there, if you want to showcase your games, maybe the Twitch is the right tool. If you want to do the search and kind of convert people on certain aspects that SEO. So there is no bad channel. I think it's what your intentions are with that channel. And it's actually up to you and your company to align those goals with the user experience. OK, so what we learned for sure is that how we search and how we interact with the results is changing. That virality is becoming important and might come to a Google. That Google is not the only search engine, and SEO no longer means Google. And with that, I would thank my fantastic panelists. Please, massive round of applause for them. Thank you. <clears throat>